My name is Burton Lim, where I'm Assistant Curator of Mammals and Curator for the Exhibition Wildlife Photographer of the Year. I'm delighted you can join us for today's Curator Conversations, a digital program that explores themes and subjects from ROM collections alongside industry professionals. This program has received ongoing support from TD, so a big thank you to them. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that the ROM sits on what has been the ancestral lands of the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Anishinaabek Nation, including the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, since time immemorial to today. This afternoon's program is in support of our current exhibition, Wildlife Photographer of the Year, at the ROM until April 24th, and which you get a sneak peek with my background image. Um, WPY, as we affectionately call it, is developed and produced by Natural History Museum in London, England. We would like to acknowledge the support of Royal Exhibition Circle donors in making this exhibition possible. The Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition attracted over 50,000 submissions from photographers of all ages in 95 countries around the world. The exhibition stunning images allow visitors to experience nature in vivid detail and get up close to some of the world's most extraordinary species, the lives they live, and the challenges they face. This competition offers photographers an internationally acclaimed platform to showcase their work while celebrating our beautiful planet and uh, encouraging us to all uh, think differently about our impact on our shared home. Before we begin, a word of warning that some may find the images and content potentially graphic and upsetting. My guest for today's program is award-winning photographer, Joanne MacArthur, who is also an author and sought after speaker. Through her long-term body of work, We Animals, she has documented our complex relationship with animals around the globe. Since 1998, her work has taken her to over 60 countries. And in 2019, she founded We Animals Media to bring visibility to hidden animals by documenting their stories in the human environment. Her books include Hidden Animals in the Anthropocene, um, published by We Animals Media in 2020 with co-editor Keith Wilson. Captive was published by Lantern Books in 2017 and We Animals was also published by Lantern Books in 2014. Thousands of her images are available in the We Animals Archive searchable database. Uh, she was also the subject of the critically acclaimed 2013 documentary, The Ghost in Our Machine, which followed her as she documented the plight of abused and exploited animals while advocating for their rights as sentient beings. We'll begin with a short discussion around uh, Joanne's work. During the program, please submit your thoughts via the Q&A feature on the screen, and we'll have some time at the end to answer your questions. So please join me in welcoming Joanne MacArthur to the conversation. Hi, Joe. Are you uh, traveling or in Toronto watching the snow melt? I am in Toronto. I've been here grounded during the pandemic, like a lot of you. Usually I'm traveling six to eight months a year, but uh, not lately. Okay, well, same with me, and uh, not, not six to eight months, but uh, usually two to three months. Uh, so looking forward to uh, a return to some type of normal. Uh, so I, I want to start off um, with something that made the news not too long ago. Uh, one of your most recent uh, photography awards was received at the UN Climate Change Conference, uh, COP26 in Glasgow, uh, late last year. Uh, and um, we'll be having it looping uh, in the slide deck. Um, so what, what do you think resonated with people uh, in this photo of a kangaroo and uh, her joey uh, in, in pouch? This is an image that shows the current climate, literally, uh, of our relationship between you know, non-human and human animals. And this is an image that's in People's Choice this year at Wildlife Photographer of the Year, and it won the grand prize as well with the big picture competition. I think that is resonating because not only does it show the disaster that we are aware of, and that is a global conversation, but it's also a symbol of hope. So we have this kangaroo who is a survivor. She, um, a survivor, despite the fact that over 3 billion animals were estimated to have been killed or displaced during these fires. And so here she is looking at me and she has a baby. And um, I think those of my images, and I photograph a lot of 
sadness and suffering, but some of my images that are the most popular are those that give us hope because we all thrive on that, don't we? And here we are, in fact, at another one of my WPY winning images of a man holding a gorilla. The gorilla's name is Pickin, and she was rescued from the bushmeat trade. And so while this whole photo essay tells the story of things that we do to animals and why they need to change, it also shows love and human goodness. And we need to be reminded of those things. It inspires us to be part of the change. And I, I know also in the um, that COP26, um, uh, the kangaroo was just one of two other uh, photos that you had uh, that were award winners uh, as well, that, that I think are in yeah. the slide deck too, I think. They are, they are. And in fact, so there were three winning images at that exhibit. And I was really happy to see that the other two images are images of our industrialized use of animals. So we have a pig in a factory farm, pigs in a factory farm, and we have an animal who is in transport at the Bulgarian Turkish border where millions of animals are transported uh, into Turkey every year for slaughter. And these are the animals that I focus on and my team at We Animals Media. So we look at the billions of animals who are overlooked every year, who aren't generally part of the public conscience. And you know they are sentient, just as sentient as the kangaroo, just as sentient as the elephants and the other charismatic animals that we revere. And, uh, and so that's what we do at We Animals Media. That's what I've been doing for 20 years is shining a light on these other animals. Uh, we use them every day, we eat them, we wear them, we use them in medical research, we use them in entertainment, and yet we actually fail to see them even when they're right in front of us. And, and so that is my mission. That's the mission of, um, of animal photojournalism as well. And I think it's really cool that those two images were awarded because it just shows that these stories are, are creeping into the public conscience, into the media. It's becoming inevitable that we have to look at uh, our use of others, the suffering of others. And, um, you know, science is showing us that these are sentient creatures, the study, um, sorry, the uh, ethology, the science of ethology is super, super cool. And study of animal behavior. We know that they're complex and sentient and they feel all sorts of things just like we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we just can't turn our backs to that anymore. Yep. Um, so, I mean, photojournalism can be difficult. Uh, when you have to get your message out, you know, with typically one or only a few uh, photographs. Um, so what is uh, activist uh, photojournalism and, and what are some of the extra challenges uh, involved in this specific field? Well, like conflict photography, animal photojournalists and photojournalists are going to places where generally we're not wanted and we're not invited. Uh, whether you're a conflict photographer or an animal photojournalist, you're interested in showing the individuals caught in systems, caught in wars, caught in suffering and violence. And uh, so while, you know, I stated earlier that we uh, use and eat over 80 billion land animals every year, we can't feel those numbers. It's like really hard to feel that. It's the same with humans as well. We can't feel that. But those 80 billion are made up of individuals like this macaque you see here. This is at a monkey breeding facility in Southeast Asia. And we're talking about activist photography today. This is a great example because um, I was investigating these monkey farms, three of them, uh, three of these farms in Southeast Asia with a campaigning organization. And with those images, uh, the campaigning organization brought that story to the CITES convention in Geneva the following year. And as a result of the work that we did, two of those three farms were closed due to welfare infringements. And uh, so that's what activist photography is, whatever kind you're doing. It's with the goal of, of changing systems and influencing people and helping campaigners uh, you sort of mentioned it briefly um, at the beginning, um, but you, you have a connection with Wildlife Photographer of the Year, uh, not only uh, in this year's People's Choice Award, uh, mm -hmm. but also a highly commended image in the 2019 uh, WPY Foreign Journalism category. How do you see this exhibition raising awareness for animal welfare? 
Well, this is one of the biggest and best exhibitions and competitions in the world. It has a fantastic platform. I'm really glad that it's at the ROM again this year. And it's had an interesting traje trajectory. So, you know, initially the point of it was to celebrate and inspire awe in us about the natural world and about animals. And it did that very successfully. And then what we've seen happen in, in recent decades is that wildlife photography has become more political and it moved into the realm of conservation photography. So it not only was showing us beautiful images that might make us feel good, but it's giving us a lot more to think about. And what we've seen uh, now in WPY is that in recent years, they've created this photojournalism category, which is so important. And that's where more of the animal photojournalism comes in. They've created a space for the harder stories. And like this winning image uh, by Adam Oswell, uh, this is a performing ele elephant. And, um, you know, WPY is more than ever giving, creating a space for us to, to look at these images that challenge us and really should. It seems to me that WPY more than ever wants to challenge us to, to think uh, and change and you know, really think critically about our uses, abuses, and sharing of spaces with animals. Yeah, I, I think um, this is either our eighth or ninth year that that we've had WPY at the ROM, and uh, we definitely have it uh, for next year because we actually signed a two-year contract. Right. In the beginning, we were just doing like one year at a time type thing, but uh, so we do have it uh, guaranteed uh, again for next year. Um, and I, I know. Um, uh, the, the photo came up a little bit earlier, but uh, I, I don't want to pick favorites, but I, I do like the um, the gorilla photo uh, because it, it seems to um, sort of capture, you know, that particular moment. Uh, yeah, so so when I saw that, uh, even before I, I knew you or met you, uh, I said, oh, that, that, that really grabbed my attention. Great, great. These are confronting images, but, um, you know, what we're doing at We Animals Media, what WPY is doing, is making these stories visible. They were invisible before. Uh, these last two images, speaking of hidden and invisible, these are images of animals in transport right here in Toronto. This is a photo by photographer Louise Jorgensen. It's in our book, Hidden, which I know we're talking about soon. Yep. <laughs> Stunning image of an animal looking out from a transport truck right before slaughter, as with that previous image of the pig Animals go through so much in their lives that we just don't know about. We, we, we don't consider it. Often our interaction with animals is when they are on a plate um, or on our, on our coat. But what were their lives before that? Um, and that's what we study at We Animals Media. That's what I've been doing for 20 years. And um, I'm just so pleased that WPY and, and others are really picking up these stories. Yeah. yeah. It's exciting time. It's a really exciting time to be an animal photojournalist, uh, you know, these days because it's it's affecting change. It's uh, it's you know part of more and more the part of mainstream media, and and it has to be like here we are uh, at an image of a mass burial of birds. They are being buried alive. Uh, the reason they're being buried alive is because it's too costly and and, and you know time and financially to to humanely euthanize every single one of these birds. And so they drop them into the ground and they cover them up in a mass live burial. And they're doing this because there is a threat of avian flu, which we are seeing you know, more and more. It's the reason we're in this pandemic um, is because of our use of animals. And so with crowded conditions, like you see here, uh, whether it's a, a bird farm or a pig farm, we know that these are creating conditions that cause pandemics illnesses are spilling over to us. That's why we've been in lockdown for two years. And so um, now really is the time to be looking at these stories and um, finding a way forward. What a perfect time to land on this slide. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, at the ROM and uh, even my own research, I've got a little bit of a connection, um, you know, with the current COVID pandemic um, is that uh, we're helping some uh, virologists at Western University uh, help uh, develop uh, like a vaccine bank you know, for, you know, whenever, you know, the next outbreak happens, uh, hopefully, you know, nip it in the bud so it doesn't turn into a global pandemic. 
uh, because you know there, there will be uh, all you know these other you know viral outbreaks. Um, so uh, yeah, so we're we're trying to help. Uh, staying ahead of the curve uh, by developing a vaccine bank um, for coronaviruses in particular. Amazing. So we need to be really prepared and we also need to think about the cause of, of these pandemics in the first place, which is of course our use and abuses of animals. And so that's that's my target, right, is to, to expose our uses and abuses of animals and get us to change things at that level. So hopefully we don't have to be, you know, getting vaccines and boosters all the time. Yep. That's an unhappy future if that's what we have to do. Yep. So I, I see you have your prop. Uh, so your, your latest book, Hidden, um, Animals in the Anthropocene. Uh, uh, it, I mean, it does take a hard look at, you know, how we use animals uh, in many different ways. Uh, but it also suggests, uh, offers suggestions on how to change what we do. Uh, can you give us uh, some of the options available uh, for us to do things differently? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so this, this insert called The Way Forward is inside this book, as I pointed <laughs> out, Hidden. And Hidden really is an unflinching look at uh, what is and what should never again be, really. It's about the state of our animal use these days. And um, we wanted to create this book the way other photographers have created books on, on conflict and civil war and genocide and all these things that we've done. I, I made this book because I knew that animals needed a historic tome as well that memorialized uh, their lives and, and what we do. And, but, you know, it's so depressing. It's, it's it, you know, looking at this amount of suffering can be quite paralyzing. And so we do also want to inspire people uh, once they look at these images. We don't want to leave people hanging with, well, you know, what can I do? They see what I do. I take photos to help change things. But people often wonder, especially students, you know, well, what can I do? I'm, you know, I'm only 13 or, you know, all these questions. And I love answering them. So we did create this, uh, this insert, The Way Forward. And it's just beautiful. It has all of these ideas about, about changing the world. And you can, you know, there's so much you can do. So we have, you can skip the show. You can avoid uh, going to places where animals are used for entertainment, like rodeos and bullfights, aquariums. Um, we can change our traditions. We don't always need to have a turkey at the center of the table on Thanksgiving, things like this. Um, and that's actually, speaking of, that's one of the main things we can do. We can eat fewer animals. We can stop eating animals. Uh, it's an easy thing to do, especially in these big cities like Toronto when there are so many other options. Um, we can adopt animals, uh, dogs and cats. We don't have to buy them. Uh, we can support politicians who support animal welfare and uh, take action in your community, lend a hand, vote with your wallet, uh, change the law. And um, some of these images, images you see here that are rotating are really positive images of uh, people with animals. And that's one of the things we focus on is um, showing people who are doing inspiring work. So you can be an entrepreneur for animals. You can be a chef. You can be an animal rights lawyer. That's a thing now. That wasn't a thing a few decades ago. Uh, you can start a sanctuary. You can be an artist. And that's what some of those images are showing is these exceptional people who are leading the way towards a kinder world. Yeah, I, th I think you have uh, a lot of supporters out there. Because I I'm looking at the chat and there's a lot of uh, comments uh, agreeing with what you said, uh, scrolling through the chat. So uh, good. Uh, good to see and, and, and hear that. Uh, yeah, so, so obviously um, you have a passion and interest uh, in both you know, photography and animal wel welfare. Um, but what motivated your interest in animal rights activism and why did you choose photography uh, as your main media of telling these stories? Hmm. Well, you know, I was really, I was following my passions and, you know, I knew from my teen years that I was really obsessed with photography. And since I was a child, I, um, you know, I was always quite empathetic and I, I have my parents to thank as well because they allowed me to be empathetic and to express that empathy for other animals. And, you know, I often felt sorry for animals. They gave me joy, but I also felt sorry for the urban animals who'd been hit by a car or the dog 
languishing in a backyard, never being walked. Um, and so oh, an underrepresented majority, they just don't get, um, you know, let's just say respect. They're not respected by us. And so that's why we use them and we treat them as second class citizens. But the world is a beautiful place because we share them. We share it with animals. And uh, so I always wanted to help tell their stories and inspire people to speak up for them and to protect them. And so the camera is a good way to do that. And the camera is a good way to satisfy my curiosity about the world as well. I get to travel, meet interesting people, tell stories that are important and be an activist through, through my work. Yeah, yeah I, I, um, I tried to do a little bit of photography myself. Uh, I, I don't get you know my story out as, as widely as you. Uh, so my, m most of my photography is more for research purposes. You know, uh, doing macro photography of bats to you know find all these details on their faces, uh, you know, to help me identify them. So it's more for a research perspective. But um, I uh, I think it's great and I love it that you no know, you're using it, um, you know, uh, to promote or or spread uh, sort of the word uh, the the word um, uh, in in a wider and broader format. Uh, you know, to audiences you know throughout the world uh, via your books uh, mm. or your website. Um, so uh, which brings me. Um, you know, to the, to the next question. So a few, a few years ago, you, uh, you formed We Animals Media. Um, so what are um, some of the more urgent issues you hope to bring to light uh, or change in the immediate future? The main issue that we tackle is the industrialization of animal farming. And we have, as I've said, billions of animals caught in these systems. And so not just me, but about 60 contributors who are working with We Animals Media, uh, we are going to where farming practices take place, uh, where animals are being transported, uh, used in all sorts of ways, and, um, and highlighting that. And we are, we're tackling this because so few people are. And the numbers are so high. And fish, you know, when we say we're eating 80 billion land animals, that excludes sea life. And it's impossible to, to count the number of those animals uh, being used by us. And so they're measured by the ton. We might say X number of tons are caught this year. And, and that's a lot of suffering. And really our goal at WAM, We Animals Media, is to help curb that, that suffering. And we're also very interested in telling the stories of animal intelligence and sentience um, sorry, above and beyond that, we want to show the overlap, overlap of animal use with the other very important stories of our time, which are climate change and pollution and deforestation. All of these things are, are linked. And the more we know about that, I think the more that we will, you know, all feel this sense of urgency that I feel every single day. Uh, that's what I really want. I want us to be shocked by what people see in my images and you know, it was images early on that inspired me and fueled my desire to be out there in the world changing things. And so I hope that the We Animals Media images do the same for others.